Uh, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, good morning, good, uh, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I'm very happy to be uh, among you this uh, this morning uh, and or this afternoon for this wonderful um, encounter. I'm going to talk about um, the timing, evaluation, and management of palatal fistula. Outline uh, will be uh, definition. Background and classification, evaluation, timing of repair, techniques of repair, and the management of algorithm, and then the conclusion. So for the definition, a palatal fistula is an epithelized opening in the repaired area between the mouth and nasal cavity as a result of breakdown or failure in healing of the primary repaired cleft palate. Um, palatal fistulae occur uh, with a wide range ranging from 3 to 50 percent and uh, it, is, uh, it, it is important that we, we care for them because they can lead to regurgitation of food and liquids through the nasal cavity they can interfere with the speech development and hearing, and also they cause bad breath. The main causes are uh, uh, infections due to inadequate oral hygiene, uh, inadequate blood supply of the flaps used, uh, surgical skills which are not very good, timing of the repair, and also the severity of the cleft palate. It is known that uh, bilateral cleft palates present with the palatal fistulae more than unilateral uh, cleft palate. And also um, the width of the palate uh, sometimes would cause, if the width is so large, uh, the, the closure might be under tension and leading to, to a palatal fistula. There, for classification, there are two widely used uh, classifications. You can classify according to size of the fistula or the location of the fistula. According to size, you have uh, small fistulae. Those are the ones which are less than three millimeters, or the medium ones, which are between three to five millimeters, and the large ones, which are over five millimeters. Um, according to location of the fistula, we have the Pittsburgh classification that was uh, uh, described by Smith et al. in uh, 2007, and this one divides the the location in seven uh, places, beginning with type one at the uvula, type two at the soft palate, um, type three at the junction of the soft and hard palate, type four at the hard palate, uh, type five at the junction of the primary and secondary palates, um, type six, the at the, uh, that's the lingual and alveolar uh, space. And then the type seven, the labial alveolar space. The type uh, from type, type four and uh, type six and seven can also be uh, classified as the uh, anterior fistula. For the evaluation of a patient with a fistula, uh, you have first you have to first uh, ascertain the age of the patient, and you get the complaints of the patient uh, because the complaints will lead you whether you do the the, the palate closure 
earlier or later, as we shall uh, see later. And then you have to um, ascertain the size and the size of the, of the fistula. You have to um, evaluate the, the skin, the tissues around the fistula, uh, looking for scarring from the previous surgeries and availability of soft tissue uh, around the fistula. And also you ascertain the effect of the oral, oral hygiene of the patient. Then it is also important to get comments from the speech pathologists because the speech pathologists will guide you whether this uh, fistula is uh, a, a very big problem to the patient causing uh, speech distortions, uh, in which case it would be important to repair the palate, uh, the fistula alley. Also the orthodontist is uh, important to get a comment from, from them uh, because then some of the operations of the, some of the procedures of uh, the orthodontist could be combined with the uh, palatal closure. Um, the timing of the repair of the fistula uh, for symptomatic fistulas uh, they should be repaired early on. And symptomatic, by symptomatic, I mean that the, the fistula is causing problems to the patient by causing a fluid and, the, and food to, to escape into the nasal cavity, or it is causing speech distortions. Then that's when um, this uh, fistula should be repaired early on. But then it should be repaired at least six months after the last uh, cleft surgery of either primary palatoplasty or attempted fistula repair. Uh, for asymptomatic fistulae, uh, you may not necessarily repair them. Um, what are the techniques of uh, fistula repair? We have two treatment pathways. You can, uh, there's the non-surgical and surgical. The non-surgical is uh, basically used when uh, it is not possible to, to treat the, to, to, to treat the fistula because of the previous surgeries or the patient is uh, not willing to undergo another operation. Um, so the, you can just ab, uh, observe the symptoms for asymptomatic patients, or you can use obturation using parietal processes uh, or cotylization. Cotylization using silver nitrate pencil or other cotylization uh, methods. For the surgical options, uh, we, we might use, um, the commonly used is the von Lagenberg repair, re repair. You repair the, 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 the pallets again, thereby, thereby causing, um, thereby uh, repair, uh, restructuring, reconstructing the fistula. Or you can use local flaps, you can use tongue flaps, buccal flaps, or it can be a repair uh, using interposition grafts. That is three layer repair. You repair using the above, but then you, uh, in between you, you put in um, uh, a material, you can use bone, cartilage, free periosteum, fatty dermal grafts, or um, uh, synthetic materials. And then, the last one is uh, the free flaps. Um, free flaps, uh, usually we reserve them for very, very uh, big fistulae, which cannot be repaired using the above methods. And uh, usually they, uh, 
the flip flaps use you can use the side spades or forearm flap or lateral uh, uh, lateral for uh, lateral arm flap uh, so um, so those are the some of the flaps which you can use for flip flaps so uh, I'm going to talk uh, about some of the local flaps used. And uh, I start off with the Klima flap. Klima was the first one to describe what they call the hing flaps. The hing flaps are uh, whereby you use um, tissues around the fistula and you intern them inwards to repair the the fistula. Then you have Holdsworth, Gabkan, and Ejedi. I'm going to elaborate on each one of them. So, as I've said, the Klima was the first in 1827 to describe the hing flap, and it is the mostly used local flap. It consists of mucosal or mucopelusial turnover flaps, as the diagram there can show. So the, ne the nasal, in the treating fistula, it is important that you repair uh, them in two, at least two layers. And the first nasal layer is the interned flaps as, is, as, as described by Krima. And then there you can, after that, you can use the uh, rotational mucopelusial flap to close off the oral layer. Uh, Holdsworth uh, described several other techniques using still the interned flaps for the nasal layer and then the uh, and then you call periosteal flaps uh, which are rotated as the diagrams are, can show to close off the oral layer. Then Gabka, uh, in 1939, also uh, brought uh, uh, a modification of the Klima flap. And in this case, uh, interned flaps, as Klima uh, had described, and uh, a VY mucopelioso flap to close off the oral layer. Then Ejedi in uh, 1976 described this bilateral bipedical mucosal flaps. Uh, this one is very useful for fistulae in the premaxillary area. So you elevate two mucopelioso flaps and advance them to close off the fistula. In this case, you may not um, use the interned flaps for the nasal layer, but sometimes if the fistula is uh, small enough, you can use the interned flaps and then you cover the, the, oral, layer, the oral layer with the bipedical flap. This technique, the disadvantage is that later on you have to come back uh, after uh, at least three weeks to, to to list the pedicles. Uh, so this one might require two operations. Um, some of the examples uh, here, um, I've used the Klima flaps for the, uh, for the nasal layer and then uh, advanced mucopelioso flap to cover the, the layer, the nasal layer. Then von Langenbach, which uses uh, lateral relaxing incisions, but still you have to use the, in the turnover flaps to, to reconstruct the nasal layer. And then the, the relaxing incisions to close off the fistula. Then the buccal flap, uh, the buccal flap can be uh, either 
on the two sides, the first layer being uh, used to cover the nasal layer, and then the, the other buccal flap to cover, on the other side to cover the oral layer. Then there's the alveolar extension and phytoplasty, especially for the anterior fistula. Um, your free flaps have already said the size, pedis, and forearm flaps. So um, there's an organism that can be used for management of uh, fistulae. Uh, the pre alveolar you, you can use, uh, it can also be combined with the uh, alveolar bone grafting, and then you use the mucosal flap or buccal gingival, uh, from the buccal gingival group. Then alveolar and post alveolar, if it is uh, non functional, it can be left until the, the time when you can do bone grafting and you combine the two. But if it is functional, you can use the alveolar extension palatoplasty or the tongue flap. Then for the, the hard palate, uh, if it is, which is usually functional, you use Langenberg, Langenberg flap, as I said, the tongue flap, uh, the other flaps which I've described, or free flap. Then the junction one between the hard and soft palate, uh, still the same buccal flap or, or Langenberg. And then the soft palate, if it is non functional and not associated with velopharyngeal incompetence, uh, you may not op uh, operate on it. But if it is functional, then the surgery should be planned together with the, the surgery of velopharyngeal incompetence uh, collection. Uh, using a pharyngeal flap or pallor's paltoplasty. In conclusion, paltofistulis are a common complication of paltoplasty. A natural evaluation of the problem at hand is essential. And in order to prevent the occurrence of the fistula, timing and proper surgical technique are essential. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug, uh, for your excellent uh, presentation, lecture. Um, so now we want to ask for our questions. Please, if you have any questions, you can put in a question and answer, please. Uh, oh, let's see. Um, I'm not good at French. I can see that there's one question here. I don't know if it's to the speaker or this was before. <clears throat> but whilst waiting for other questions, I have one, sir. C can I ask, please? Yes, please. You can go ahead. Okay. Right. So you classified the um, fistula or yes, the please. where you can have, yes. In your experience, where is the commonest site? One to seven uh, types. Which one yeah. do you think is the commonest? Thank you. The, com the commonest is uh, commonest fiscally is at the uh, hard palate, uh, the hard palate, or the junction between the hard and soft palate. That's where the the commonest fiscally occur. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any, any reasons for that? Any reasons why that is the commonest? Um, I would think that uh, most uh, surg uh, surgeons, they don't, mm -hmm. when uh, doing a paratoplasty, they don't release the tissues around there very well. The tissues okay. there, they need to be released very, very well. Uh, in most cases, people tend to close that area under tension. Okay. And that's why uh, the fistula occur. Okay. So there is the need for tension free, tension free closure. Yes. Of, of your, okay. Good. 
Any any other question? Any other question, please? Um, I thought I saw a hand. Uh, Nikki, can you help us if that hand is still raised? I saw a hand briefly, but it disappeared before I could say much. Uh, Nico, is there is there uh, somebody's hand? Nico, are you there? Oh uh, yes, Doctor Albert. Yes. I am here. I do see All a right. hand. Yes. Um, you see the hand? No. No, you don't see a hand. Okay. No, no, okay. I don't. Okay. I, I understand this is a fairly complex uh, problem. Um, most people may not have questions, but <laughs> it's also important that uh, uh, as uh, craft surgeons, we, we endeavor to get the the principles um, so that we, we don't get this uh, fistfully. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Wamela, what about the anterior ones, type six, type seven? Uh, any particular precautions? Um, um, for the type three, you mentioned tension free closure. What about incomplete cleft lip and palate all the way to the alveolus? What are the things you must watch out for uh, to prevent the fistula formation in the first place? Thank you. Yeah. In the, for, for the anterior um, uh, cliffs around, around the alveolus, um, the first thing is that uh, if possible, uh, uh, we have to adopt to uh, alveolar molding, uh, the NAM techniques. So that by the time you do the, the uh, lip repair, the alveolar sediments are in line. But where we are not able, like in most yeah. of the, our African setting, yeah. uh, we during the, the time of lip repair, uh, it is important to do a, a gingival periosteoplasty. periosteoplasty. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So, so this uh, will help to close off the, the, the defects. And also, um, it is said that it creates a newborn to close off the, the, the alveolar so that um, we, we prevent formation of this fistula. Okay. On the other hand, also during the technique, we have to know that always the closure has to be tension free. We have uh, uh, tissues from the, uh, we can get a, a local flap. A, a, a mucosal or myomucosal flap from the from the labium to rotate it into the alveolus. I don't know if you have any any other additions you could do, you could share. <laughs> oh, well, not not now. But uh, uh, um, I think you, you've, you've touched all. And uh, from your presentation, you mentioned the fact that uh, fistula formation can range from 3 to 50%. Yes, please. And it's more with bilateral than unilateral. So my yeah. comment is about the fact that uh, now that there is this fellowship, for surgeons in the sub-region. Yeah. Uh, collaboration between the uh, college, West Africa College and Smart Tree yeah. for further training. I think that 
uh, such training should or would equip surgeons so that we all have very low fistula rates. Indeed. Because indeed. once you take, yes, once you take all the necessary precautions, you've talked about yeah. um, the dissection at the junction and also talked about the anterior palate. So I think you, you've said, you said everything. And yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Well, uh, no, any, any questions from the French speakers? Any question from the French speaking or the Portuguese speaking? Okay, well, since there are no further questions, it's left to me to thank Dr. Idris Wamala for this excellent presentation, uh, telling us about uh, fistula. And it's been um, my pardon me. No, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. Oh, yes. So thanking you for adding to our knowledge this morning. And the point I want to maybe emphasize again is the fact that if at all possible, leave the fistula alone for at least six months after the last surgery. I think it's a very wonderful piece of advice. And uh, I recommend to all of us, sometimes parents, caretakers, others who want you to do things maybe earlier, but as the expert has just told us, leaving it for at least six months gives a better option. So thank you. And thanks, Martin, thanks, Wax.